I want to get out this graph because this graph was, again, on Newsnight. They said they got it from The Lancet. And I think this really just helps you understand all the different theories. On the y-axis, you've got cases being reported. On the x-axis, you've got months since transmission established. So this red line, that's showing if, it, if you get exponential growth and the virus gets out of control and, you know, 60% of society get it all at one time. Um, obviously, you don't want that because health services get overwhelmed. There's not much opportunity to, to protect older and more vulnerable citizens. It's, we should also know it's not just older people. It's also people with disabilities or people with suppressed immune systems. If it all happens that quickly, there's no time to protect the vulnerable, fundamentally. Well, also, society just collapses, right? You can't run supply chains, transport links. If one in four people is sick or something. Well, so this is... is that, isn't that their main... I thought that was the main concern, that you basically can't maintain public order and, and sort of the reproduction of society. No, so the, the main concern with the, red, with the red line is that loads of people die. Obvi I mean, obviously. But, no, but the point no, of all being at once... But, is but, it, no, but all, even all being at once is probably better for the economy because this... Boris Johnson said the, this... No, no, no I'm not saying the, the economy. I'm saying like public order and you might have rioting, looting, etc. Well, probably, I mean, what you'd have is you'd have lots of old people dying and you'd have lots of people... I'm not saying with, dying, with, no, but people contracting it. I'm not saying dying. Yeah, but people, Most why, people survive. Why, why, why are people contracting it going to riot? I mean, well, no, but if, well, no, because if, if, you do, if you do the red thing... What well, you supply have, chains collapse. You but, can't access but food. Chain, but supply chains... Because basically, if you, if you do no controls... <laughs> one in four police disappear, no, nurses, but one in four, teachers... But the whole point is one in four police wouldn't disappear. The only people who are going to die are people who are... I'm saying dying. Aren't. I'm saying contracting it. Yeah, but if you, can, so, if you contract it and you're fairly young... you have to be isolated... No, but you, you would. So in the red thing, in the red phase, people aren't being isolated. So that's the whole point. Right. So you could, we could just decide that we're going to let it continue. All the, all the young and healthy people who are the people who form, you know, the basis of the, of the labor force anyway, they can continue with a few sniffles and a bit of a cough. You know, some people barely notice they've got it. The economy would continue as, 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 as it had been. And then a bunch of people who are economically inactive anyway, die. Right. So that would, that would be the sort of like ultimate neoliberal capitalist we 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 value capital and we value wealth over everything else that's what you do you wouldn't have any controls whatsoever um the green option is is to say you slow it down um so you slow down the spread so ultimately again you're looking at sort of 60 to 70 percent of the population getting it before they develop herd immunity but you slow it down with measures like social isolation and then that means that the health service is never overwhelmed you have the chance to sort of separate older people and, and more vulnerable people from the ill population, and then you, you, you limit casualties. That's the green one. And then the blue one, this is what the government are saying they want to avoid. So the blue one is when you get a few cases, that's when you have absolute lockdown. So you have absolute lockdown, cases go down to zero, but then because you can't lock people in their homes forever, you have to let them out again. And the moment you let them out, there is still coronavirus around either because some people still have it in the community or because you know there's, there's still a global pandemic going on and then because no one's got herd immunity you then get another epidemic situation so the, the point being that <laughs> all that all those months that you spent locked down were pointless or if if it turns out that your second boost is in the winter then it could be that all, all that lockdown was actively uh, unhelpful let me just say uh, just respond to the things in the comments i think if you had the scenario with the red line you'd have to have martial law that's just my view. You'd have so many fatalities. You'd have prison. I mean, you'd already seen prison riots in Italy with a far lower level of, uh, of, of cases being reported per head of population. I, I just don't, I think you'd have to have martial law. I just, I think that, that's one of the considerations for government policy on this is, is public order. Uh, I, just, I just don't agree. Because, I mean, I think the prison riots probably has a lot to do with the fact that people are, well, I mean, it depends how old the people are in the prisons. I mean, ultimately, if, if, if you let the red thing happen then most of people of rioting age, most of people of working age are going to be absolutely fine. I mean, the, the human cost is, is massive for older people and people with suppressed immune system, but they're not your standard rioters and they're not your, your standard people. We're looking statistically at more system. people, you're more likely to die from this thing uh, than you would have been as the average UK national, the average person walking around per head, per capita, uh, than you would have been fighting in the Second World War. So, you know, you're looking... No, that's, but that's, but, but, that's, that's, no, hold on. But if you, so you front load all of that, several hundred thousand casualties, people being upset, supply chains being massively disrupted, etc. I just don't... I, I, I think clearly the state would think mm, this may be a big public order consideration. Well, it'd be very, unpo idea, it'd be the, very unpopular. The idea that things would be... Yeah, oh, there wouldn't be mass dissent against the government, there wouldn't be mass protests, supply chains wouldn't be disrupted, there wouldn't be prison riots, wouldn't be riots to access healthcare. Come on. You'd have martial law. 
I don't mean, I think what you'd get is you'd, get, you'd have a very unpopular government because so many people would die. But the people die, I mean, are people going to riot because people are dying from coronavirus? I don't know, because when you go and riot, you're more likely to get it. I, I mean, anyway, I, I, we disagree. I think that's probably a consideration for the government not adopting the red line strategy. Michael. Who wants all of those people to die? I mean, I think, them, uh, well, I mean, I, I think the other danger is that the government maybe have adopted the red line strategy. So that's the, that's the <laughs> fear. So, so <laughs> we'll just, so the blue, yeah, we've talked about the blue line. So, so disagreements about the government response are fundamentally, the government say they're on the green line and they're avoiding the blue line, which is what they say countries like Taiwan, who've had a more, you know, shut down system are doing. But then what people um, like, I've forgotten his name already, the Anthony Costello. So he was the guy who was the next director of the World Health Organization. What they're saying is actually, yeah, this is fine in theory, but what the government have implemented would actually put us on the red line. Because he's saying if you've got 10,000 people who currently have um, coronavirus in this country and you're not really doing anything to separate anyone, mm. then you are very close to getting to this completely overwhelming outbreak. So, so he's saying the government are putting us or the government are definitely risking putting us on the red line. And given that, you know, if, if, if you're looking at this graph and you say, what's, what's the best outcome, the green line? What's the worst outcome is the red line? So then you thought you'd aim somewhere between the green line and the blue line. And, and the British government seems to be aiming somewhere between the green line and the red line. So can I ask you, given that their voter base is, is older voters, why would they be front-loading several hundred thousand deaths almost on purpose? Yeah, so that's what seems very... I mean, this Chris Giles, I think, from the FT was tweeting precisely that. He was saying, like, even if hypothetically this makes sense, there's a sort of time lag. So it, it could be that in, in two years we look back at the government policy and say, oh, that was kind of clever because whilst we had more deaths... In spring 2020, France had more deaths in spring 2021. But the point is, and this is what Chris Giles, this is, I think, economics editor at the, the Financial Times, he was saying that if, if we have a period where, because France is in lockdown, they have 500 deaths in April, and because we don't have lockdown, we have 2,000 deaths in lockdown, uh, 2,000 deaths mm. in, in, in UK, then the government are going to struggle to continue with that yeah. particular policy, right? Yeah. So, so there is a concern. So fr you're right, front-loading the deaths could be, could be a big a, problem. A strategic comms nightmare. You know, look, we'll be like, te look tell, tell, tell the political editor of the Daily Mail, look, we'll be, give it yeah. six months, actually. More deaths now for less deaths later. It's never been a particularly good yeah. slogan. Yeah.